All right, joining me now is the chairman of Sony Interactive Entertainment Worldwide Studios, but you know him as that cool guy who's on stage, V3 for PlayStation and the PlayStation Experience, Sean Layden. Sean, uh, thanks for joining us on Live with YouTube Gaming. Hey, thanks for having us, and uh, congratulations on your program. Thank you very much. It's been a lot of fun, and i got to say, you know, you know the gaming community loves to have opportunities to talk about things, so I really appreciate you kind of coming on wanting to talk to all the folks who are PlayStation fans around the world. It has been such a big year for PlayStation. I mean, Uncharted 4 coming out, an amazing E3. PSVR, and then next week, PS4 Pro. Uh, you, yeah. you guys are, I feel like, I was saying to someone at PlayStation, it's like every month you guys have this major product launch this fall. Well, that was it. After E3, typically, uh, as an industry and as a company, we kind of you know, lick our wounds and get back after all the E3 crazy and then start to get ready for the end of the year, but yeah. we just went straight out. Yeah. Right after E3 was just beginning the promotion for PSVR, which has been really successful. Um, Are you happy with how it's selling? Really happy with it, yeah. yeah. Um, we hope we can get more product in stores because I understand some places are kind of showing up light now. Yeah. Um, but it's been fantastic. I've been spending a lot of time with Rush of, Rush, Rush of Blood. Yes, that's a good one. That's I, a great Thumper, game. Thumper, I love too. Thumper is, the, uh, is a secret hit. A lot of yes. people are, are, are keying off on that. Yeah, it's um, amazing. So we're really happy with that. We also dropped the price of the, the, uh, the standard PS4 right. to two ninety nine, and a, a week from today we'll have the launch of PS4 Pro. Yep. So um, there's been a lot going on. So one thing I wanted to ask you about before we go any further is chairman of SIE Worldwide Studios. I think a lot of people know you as you know this guy that we see at the press conferences that guy talking press about conference, stuff. Yeah. But you know you were obviously kind of uh, Sony America, Sony Computer Entertainment America, and then Sony Interactive Entertainment. Right. What, is, what does the chairman of Worldwide Studios do? Are you focused now on sort of a lot of the games in the first party group, or how do you define what you do every day? Well, there's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot that's going on. Um, but development is where I came from originally. Yeah. Inside of, inside of PlayStation. When I started with the company back in 96, yeah. um, I started in Tokyo, uh, in game development there. And that was like, the, 96 was, was that the year that Crash came out? That was the year that Crash came out. Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah. that, because that was like year, year two of PlayStation. I yep. made the first E3. And that's what, like, I don't think people realize, like, you know, you were there. Over 20 years ago, when this Over was all years coming ago. together. Yeah, when it was a very small operation in one building in, in downtown Aoyama, Tokyo. Yeah. Uh, and now it's grown into this um, very large organization. And back then, what we were trying to do uh, for P PlayStation 1 was, my division was in charge of bringing Western titles to Japan. Okay. Now, Japan, of course, is mecca for, for gaming, right? That, is, that yeah. is the center of all gaming activity. And then to bring American games and European games and then try to appeal to Japanese consumers okay. was... You know, like trying to sell, you know, coals to Newcastle, as they say. And that was, so Crash was an example, probably something Naughty Dog made in America. Naughty Dog made, yeah. and um, we treated that one differently. Um, okay. You know, Shu Yoshida, your yes. friend, um, he was the lead producer on that for Japan. Wow. And um, they tried to make it look as Japanese as possible. You can see subtle differences. The Crash character yeah. in Japan, the, the eyes are a bit bigger, and it's kind of got a little bit of an anime sheen to it. Some of the gameplay was tuned differently. Wow. Um, and everything was done in, in Japanese script, katakana. So they were All conscious of trying to make conscious it work. Conscious of trying it. to. There will be people in Japan who will tell you that Crash Bandicoot is a Japanese game. Right. Wow. Um, we, on the other hand, were trying to embrace the westernness of the titles we were selling. Destruction Derby, yes. uh, ESPN Street Racer. Warhawk. I remember Warhawk. Starhawk. <laughs> yeah, we tried all of that. Um, uh, with, um, with Wipe out. Struggling success. Our biggest selling western title in Japan was Formula One. Really? Okay. Huge Formula One fan base uh -huh. uh, in Japan, especially around Ayrton Senna, the, the driver who, yeah. who passed away. Um, so Formula One is big over there. Interesting. So you kind of worked on development of all those games and now have, you know, obviously ca came over to America, Sony Computer Entertainment America. Right. Now this sort of role that you have, how are you heavily involved back in development of software now? Well, Shu Yoshida remains president of, of Worldwide okay. Studios and, you know, he's, 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 the, he's the man who makes all that magic happen. Yep. I, bringing me into it is really just trying to get a closer alignment between what we do on the publishing side of things yeah. as well as development. Um, also to work with the studios in, in seeing how we can continue to, to innovate yeah. and to push the edge. I would say that you know, Uncharted 4 is probably the best um, adventure game uh, of this generation. Yep. But at the same time, uh, we need to be there for, we call it a platform, right? You know, yeah. for, for PlayStation 4, for things like VR. You know, the Worldwide Studios um, did a lot of work, you know, a dozen plus games to support the launch of PSVR, which is a, a kind of program which, though we had a lot of support from third parties and indies as well, you know, we have to show our 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 love for it, our yep. belief in it, um, to make sure that that the uh, that the market goes, if you yeah. will. 
So um, we're doing a lot of that, about coming together to really support the platform and to continue to, to push the edge of great gaming. Yeah. And you play a lot of games too. That's something I think people, you know, probably I don't know get to play as much as I'd like. like. <laughs> yeah, that's Is there anything, the you know, obviously Uncharted 4, I know we both loved. Yeah. Uh, there have been other highlights for you this year, just in your, it doesn't even have to be a first party game, but things that you've loved? Well, I've been playing a lot of VR yeah. for the last six months, you know, trying to, um, you know, get, uh, get uh, cognizant with that at the same time. You know, we were constantly tuning to the last minute to make sure the games were all yeah. um, at, their, at their best effect. Um, I'm a lot of first person shooters. Yeah. Okay. Been doing a lot. That's kind of where I sit. That's I'm I'm, I'm the midnight dad, right? Okay. You work all day. You come home late at night. Played your Titan, Titanfall two yet? Haven't pulled that one out yet. Okay, that's a good one. I still can't complete Doom. <laughs> <laughs> that Doom last, was, that, that last level is just rock hard for me. Doom is such a great story. I think of that classic old school feel. You talk about like old school yeah. '90s games and yeah. just fast, frenetic. Fast, um, frenetic, really well and, and enemies take patterns that you can learn and, and yep. come out against. And it was. Uh, that was a blast from the past. Well, you've got a good year for first party. Obviously, Uncharted. Uh, you know, I'm in game awards mode, and I'm sure that will be uh, recognized in some way because right. that's obviously an incredible game. Uh, Last Guardian coming out in just a couple weeks. Coming gonna, out in a few. weeks. I know we're gonna have. Uh, we probably announce it now. We're gonna have Ueda is actually gonna be on the show next oh, week fantastic. talking about the Last Guardian. Yeah. So that should yeah, be. Yeah, when really that fun. went gold, you can you know paint paint a happy <laughs> Ueda from, from that moment forward. I was gonna yes. say that's been a long journey, but the thing is, you guys have really supported him as a creator through all these years, and I know that was a big moment last year at E3, finally bringing it back. Yeah, and I feel that you know I've been somehow attached to that project. Yes. Through being president of SCJ or what I was doing in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we're so glad that he's he's come to completion on that. Not just because yeah. we're glad to bring it out to uh, to the to the population, but it's a fantastic story. It's yeah. a typical Ueda tale. Yeah. And I think it's going to find a lot of love. He's done an amazing job. Now, one game I do want to ask you about that's a Sony game that came out uh, this summer, No Man's Sky. A lot of consumers, I think, have had very uh, great opinions about the game and what's gone on with that. From your perspective, yeah. what do you think, you know, what can the industry sort of learn from that? Do you have any takeaway on sort of like, you know, the, the feedback from the consumers around that game? I was a part of that, kind of revealing it with Sean. You and I had a lot of conversations yeah. about that over the years. What's, what's the takeaway from your perspective on that? I think Hello Games, Sean Murray and his team, um, had an incredible vision for what they're going to create. Yeah. Um, something never done before. Um, and a very small team had a very huge ambition. Yep, agreed Now, with that. I mean, they're still working at it, they're still updating it, they're, they're trying to get it close enough or closer to what, what, their, what their vision was. I, I've, I've played a lot when it yep. came out. Um, Did you get to the center of the universe? Was that left or right from where I landed? <laughs> it was a long way <laughs> in, <laughs> with a lot of mining in between. Uh, I think what we learned from that is that uh, um, we don't want to stifle ambition. Right. We don't want to stifle creativity. We don't want to put people into slots where they must execute against a, an action-adventure path, or a yep. fighting path, or a, a shooting path. Yep. Um, and perhaps over time, you know, it'll reveal itself to be um, all, all that it can be. Right, well that's the thing I think for me is, as you said, you know, I don't think people realize it was literally 10 people in like an old, What do you mean know, 10? It was six. <laughs> I flew to Guilford after I that E3. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. I said, what do you mean six people? I'm going to go to <laughs> England and find out what that looks like. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was. Exactly. And that's the thing is, I yeah. think it was, you know, there was such vision around it, and I, that's why I sort of feel bad that, uh, you know, like they had an, an insurmountable task, I think, and pressure around it. And you're yeah. right, you know the, the way that the industry works and the pressures of sort of once you get sort of slotted and here's what you're doing. And I think they, they got excited about the fact, hey, we could actually be one of the big games. Um, well, and nobody in development wants to say that they can't do a thing. Right. Yeah. Right? Nobody want to tell someone, no, I can't do that for you. Yeah. People are really trying. I think, you know, looking at the different industries that I've been, had the privilege of working in, the game industry is where everybody is... It has the courage to say yes, right? And they want to try to realize their ambition. They want yep. to try to make that vision. Um, no one slinks away from a huge challenge. Yep. And sometimes you just don't get all the way there in the first go. Yep. No, that's the thing is, and we'll see. Obviously, I know they're working on updates and patches. And mm -hmm. That's the thing is, the proof will be sort of yep. uh, It'll reveal in the future to see how it reveals. Speaking of something that's going to reveal next week, PS4 Pro. Yes. Um, so this is, you know, uh, a, a project that you guys only officially announced, I guess, a couple months ago. And it, before mm -hmm. E3, it was, you know, lots of rumors about this system. Um, you know, I think a lot of gamers are wondering, is this for me? It's this upgraded PlayStation. I don't have, maybe I don't have a 4K TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who do you think this next week, you know, who do you think is the buyer that's going to pick this up? Well, you know, PlayStation 4 Pro is, is sort of a manifestation of our, of, of our desire to, to continue to, to innovate 
the platform, even between, you know, you call them you know, generations, yeah. right? And um, we were able to find that we could, we could create a system which would support all PlayStation 4 content as we know it and going forward, yeah. um, but would allow a bit more horsepower under the hood. It would provide a one terabyte drive. Um, it would allow uh, developers to perhaps increase frame rates or increase resolutions. The game is the same, yeah. right? There's no, this is a pro game and this is a PS4 game. Right. They are the same, so whatever game you purchase, whether it's on for the 299, you know, more compact size PlayStation 4 in market now, or whether for the Pro, you're totally fine. Right. So I want to dispel any, you know, concerns about that. Yeah. Also, PlayStation VR doesn't require Pro to operate. Right. So there's not a concern around that. So it really is for people who are who are just looking for a bit more horsepower under the hood, who perhaps have made investments in 4K televisions right. or, or HDR supporting TVs, and want and, and want to have that uh, yeah. as well. Um, and or maybe people just need a one terabyte drive. Uh -huh. Well, well, and part of it I think what's interesting is you know there's this you said it's moving away from these sort of you know big generational leaps at least right here, but the idea is that the legacy of you can play PS4 games on the Pro. And one of the things that I just start thinking about, um, and you know even obviously Microsoft's up there talking about you know Scorpio next year and whatnot, and all these systems it feels like are going to be kind of you know backwards compatible with the previous games and you know even games Microsoft has said Scorpio games will still work on you know Xbox One and whatnot mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that general idea I think people are excited about it that you know the systems aren't going to sort of break but is that going to hold back do you think kind of innovation when you know sort of like I'm sure people could maybe max out the PS4 Pro a little bit more if they made a game just for that mm -hmm. but right now you're very clear with developers that you don't want them doing that right right the platform is PS4 right and Pro is just a little added oomph. Right. It's, I don't know, there's, there's an Audi A5 and then there's, there's the RS5. Yep. Right. Yeah, no, and, I, and I think it seems like Microsoft taking the same approach we'll see with Nintendo with the Switch, but when people yeah. do that, do you think is that going to somehow limit game developers because they can't push you know, right to the limit? I think the developers will push all the time, yeah. but I think it's really important that we maintain a, a standardized platform yeah. So, so when, when, when fans buy into a platform, they can feel confidence that it will be there, it will yeah. perform for them, yeah. you know, for a number of years. Absolutely. No, you're right, and that seems to be everyone's approach, so we'll see what happens. Um, you know, Microsoft's talking a lot about this, you know, most powerful console ever coming next year, you know, it's, you guys can't do true 4K gaming, and whatnot. I mean, for the fans out there that are wondering about this promise, obviously we don't know quite what that's going to be, but what's your perspective on, you know, the idea of someone else having the most powerful console out there? All I know is a week from today, we'll have the most powerful console out there. That's, that's true. That's true. It's yeah. real. It's coming out, it's right? It's real. It's coming out. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. And we will see what next year brings. It's always yeah. kind of fun in we'll this industry. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, a lot of great games. And the thing that, you know, I get excited about is the amount of software that you guys showed at E3, one of the best press conferences, I think, in the history of E3. So many games. I mean, I think of like Spider-Man, so Detroit, it's a little talking. and Horizon. That's the part I liked. Yeah. <laughs> Living and talking about so many games. Yeah, yes. I think uh, the studios, as well as our partners yeah. um, in the publishing community, um, are really hitting their stride with PlayStation 4 development now. You yeah. saw that all, we, we, we put it all on the, on the stage. Um, I know, it feels history. like many years of games, so hopefully we'll get some of those next year. And I mean, well, we've got, again, Last Guardian coming out next month, and yeah. quickly after that we'll have Horizon. Horizon, yeah coming out in the new year, and Spider-Man is on its way, and yep. Days Gone is on its way, and, and Detroit. God of War. God of War. See, that's what I mean. Detroit, got, there's so much stuff. So there's that was an amazing preview, and I gotta say, uh, you know, PlayStation has done so much for the gamer this generation with so many great games. Uh, we are excited to see what's next, and I know you got PSX coming up, right? And we have PSX, yes. Yeah. Um, in the first week of December, yeah. uh, shortly after a small event, I think, that you're hosting. Yes, exactly. Game um, Awards right in PSX. We'll have a, a great couple of days, I think, with lots yeah. of cool games and community. Anaheim's going to be a great venue yeah. for this. Um, uh, the convention center is, is fabulous. I think the amenities around it, hotels and whatnot, will make it really easy for people to come and join us yeah. for that event. And um, we'll have a really exciting time. And um, I'll have to pick which t-shirt I'm going to wear. I was going to say, I, I was wondering if you're going to wear a t-shirt here or not. Pop that Let's one open. Like... The, uh, it was Crash last year, right? Do you have any thoughts on what it's going to be this year? I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> Can't reveal anything. Can't reveal right. That's the only thing I got, right? Is, is my well, actually, so this next thing we're going to do, which is yeah. going to be really fun, uh, this is, came out of a conversation you and I had a few months ago where you're like, maybe I'll wear this t-shirt <laughs> at PSX, Battle Arena Toshinden. A Battle PS1 Arena classic. Toshinden. Yes. Toshinden. Yes. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I like how you say it. Uh, <laughs> this is a PS1 classic, and Sean, we're going to have a head-to-head -head battle right now. Yes, I know. Are you ready? I, I think I'm ready. The thing is, 
it was amazing just to like pick up a PS1 controller again because this so is small. I know, and it's just like this is you know a wired controller, yep. SD TV. But let's head on over here because right. we are going to go no analog head sticks. to head and get ready. Kyle is going to set us up. Kyle, what do we got? 